so I'm almost out of the uh, plate nut hell that I've been in, and it really hasn't been that bad. It's been kind of fun. But I got a couple more to attach to the front side of the spars. Uh, I got to be pretty particular in how they go, uh, and the instructions are great in warning you to make sure you don't get them off backwards. So I'm going to get those installed, uh, and then we get to do some, some cool hardware bits uh, for the tie downs. <laughs> All of the fuel tank attach nut plates uh, are attached and the uh, screw holes for the screws that attach the fuel tanks have all been countersunk and uh, subsequently primed. And so now I'm doing the exact same thing except for this time access hatches on the bottom of the wings. So I've had to reset my countersink cage for these smaller screws for the access plates, um, which is a really careful process. And uh, there's a lot of conversation on the internet about the correct way to do it. The one thing that really, really helped me is actually in the RV12, I believe it is, instructions. I'll put that up on screen. Um, but it's some maximum outer and inner diameter figures uh, that worked really well for me as a double check to make sure that I had the correct depth on this. A couple things to start us off today. I got a little package in the mail. It contained the few parts that were uh, missing or incorrect from vans. Uh, Just I so gave we can them get an email when I was done doing here. This they is shot the a warning access email back saying they got them right in the mail, the which top. they did. Uh, love those folks, nothing but great things we'll to say down into the nut about them that we at just this attached. point, especially the now that I got The hatch is dimpled to make room for the head of the screw, and that countersink sits below that dimple so that the screws wind up flush. This access hatch will be used later on so that I can get to the interior of the wing after the sheeting's covered up everything around it. That's it for nut plates for a while. Now I get to go and start the tie down hardware, which is pretty cool. Let's see what that takes. That was awful. The tie downs are exactly what they sound like. Um, you fly your airplane in to an airport, you don't have a hanger for it, and you prefer it not to act like a kite in a gust of wind, you tie it down. And so they are fabricated from some aluminum extrusion. Uh, we're gonna have to make some spacers out of this bar. Uh, and essentially it's a hard point to tie a tie down ring here so that you can secure your plane to the ground. These spacers have a one inch hole in the middle, which is proving to be difficult to cut. Um, I thought I had the right tool, right tool, wrong quality. Uh, this thing's a cheap piece of crap. I went out and I bought the higher quality version of it and I've got it all clamped in here. Um, the thing scares the devil out of me, but everything's tightened up. Got my safety equipment on. Uh, I'm gonna go through a couple more checks to make sure that I can clear this hole without getting clamps in the way of anything. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna get the first one cut. Doing some quick cleanup on these pieces. Uh, it worked. The hole is centered. Holds the correct size. Took a little longer than I thought, uh, but it worked great. Three more. Got all my holes drilled, and I'm just doing some little deburring and touch-ups and cleanups. Um, Let's talk about what worked, what didn't, what I would do differently. Uh, that circle cutter works great. It's best, I found, to go halfway through, flip the piece the other halfway through. Your pilot hole will allow you to line it up perfectly. I have an imperceptible ridge in between the two sides, so that, I think, works great, or else you wind up taking out too much material um, because of that bevel. It becomes really difficult. Uh, what didn't work, I wouldn't cut them apart first. I'd leave them all on a solid bar. I would drill my holes. I would leave space between for the kerf of your bandsaw blade, uh, even too much, and then you can always sneak it back a bit. Um, but having to deal with this little piece and clamp them down, it's a little difficult. So I would have left them on the whole bar, drilled the holes, then cut them apart. Uh, other than that, safety glasses, a must. I'm an no uh, misperception that if any part of that contraption were to come loose, these would help much, um, but they certainly help from flying particles, debris. That thing scares me. Not a lot I do in here scares me. That thing scares me, so be careful.
What are you doing? Get. What are you doing? Get. I was really hopeful I could get the construction of the rear spars in on this video, but between hardware issues and the fact that we're just kind of running out of time, I wasn't able to. Not to mention it's like midnight the day before this is coming out. So those will come out next video and maybe I can get it out midweek. In the meantime, I'll leave you with some more footage of Chomp Chomp and a quick reminder that if you haven't liked or subscribed, do so. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you're enjoying these things and I'll see you soon. Thanks again for watching Ryan Flies.